Hello, I'm Rollercoaster David, and I'm joined by Austin from Amusement Insider for a new series where we'll be pitting a European coaster against a similar American coaster in a battle to see which continent has the best coaster lineup. The rules are simple. In each episode, we both pick a coaster and try to justify why our one is the best. Each coaster can only be featured once, and we'll always have to make the case for our own continent's coaster, regardless of if we secretly prefer the other one. This episode is a battle between two Goliaths, literally, as Six Flags Over Georgia's Hypercoaster takes on Wallaby Holland's Mega Coaster. Let's start by having a look at each ride's layout. Hey guys, this is Austin from Amusement Insider. Goliath the B&M Hyper at Six Flags Over Georgia starts with a 200 foot tall lift hill from a central location in the park. It heads out towards the edge of the park before its first drop. This 170 foot tall drop is actually the second tallest drop of the ride, a feature that is quite rare among roller coasters. You head up directly into a straight airtime hill. Cresting this airtime hill, you'll then experience the largest drop during the ride, a 175 foot drop directly over the entrance road. This pullout curves to the left and up into another straight hill. You'll drop down right over a small pond and up into one of the more intense moments of any B&M hyper coaster, the downward helix. This spiral lasts for quite some seconds before you fly back up through some trims into a zero-g air hill. Back down and up into an overbank turn, you're now facing back towards the park. Over the entrance road again, you'll hit three airtime hills, one after another, as you go back through some trees and then curve left into a final hop into the brake run. Wallaby Holland's Goliath starts with a fast cable lift that quickly takes you up the 153.7 foot tall lift hill. After that you plunge straight into a 150 foot drop that accelerates you to the ride's top speed of 65.9 miles per hour. After a large airtime hill, you then take a turn to the right and into an element called a Stengel Dive. Next up is a high speed low to the ground helix that spins you around 270 degrees before you're taken into the next element. This takes you out over the lake in a twisted airtime hill that gives a bit of floater airtime before you dive back to the ground and into a 380 degree helix. This high speed helix leads into another floaty twisted airtime hill before you reach the ride's finale, not one, not two, but three back to back strong ejector airtime hills. Each one of these sends you flying out of your seat, but the ride isn't over yet, as after the final ejector airtime hill, you enter a quick chicane to the left before a tight right hand turn takes you into the brakes and the ride's over. Hyper coasters to me are rides that are built to deliver speed and comfort with strong positive and negative g-forces. And while both Holland's and America's Goliaths deliver in this aspect, Goliath at Six Flags over Georgia achieves this in a more exciting and cohesive way. No section of track goes to waste during this coaster, with the start of the ride being an incredible 170 foot drop right over the entrance. Perfect B&M Air Hill delivers that sustained floating feeling that cannot be replicated by other companies thanks to the amazing restraints and perfect accuracy and shape. The two hills following are longer examples of this perfect Bollinger and Mabillard parabola, and it's worth noting that the second drop in this instance is 175 feet so your speed is still steady after that first air hill. The turnaround on Over Georgia's Goliath is filled with strong positive Gs. Wallaby Holland's Intamin Goliath doesn't deliver in this way for me due to the large circumferences of the turns. The Gs just aren't there like they are in America's version. An airtime hill brings you out of a slight gray out after the turnaround, and you head back towards the station with some more airtime. Nothing beats an excessive amount of straight air hills and the restraints of a B&M Hyper, where that feeling of freedom is enhanced by the airy and open train design. Overall, the moments of Goliath at Wallaby Holland, such as the Stangle Dive and Low to Ground Turns, don't deliver like I would want them to. It's not the best Stangle Dive, and they aren't the best turns like you would expect from an Intamin. It's not as bad as Superman versions from America. Plus, that newish color scheme has always left a sour taste in my mouth. Goliath at Six Flags does exactly what a hyper is supposed to do in an exciting layout with no breaks in pacing. Wallaby Holland's Goliath is a fantastic coaster that gives a great ride. It's the tallest and fastest roller coaster at the park, and the key difference between it and George's Goliath is that its manufacturer is Intamin, and if you know coasters, you know that that means strong ejector airtime. Goliath's cable lift is fast and gets you to the top in no time at all, and it doesn't slow down at the top either, meaning you push straight into that first drop without any kind of pause. 
The drop itself is particularly good in the back seat, as the long train means you're really sent flying as you're pulled over the top. Despite not being as tall as Six Flags over George's Goliath, Wallaby Holland's ride actually has a steeper first drop, which just goes to show how Intamin will push things that little bit further to create a wilder ride. The first hill after the drop gives wonderful strong sustained ejector air before you dive back down to ground level at high speed. The ride travels at over 65 miles an hour, and you really get a proper sensation of that speed, as there are several sections that stay low to the ground as it rushes past you, almost as if you can touch it, although that wouldn't really be advisable. Goliath also features an original element called the Stengel Dive, which is a twisting airtime hill that almost feels like an inversion. As you reach the apex of the hill, the ride rapidly twists 121 degrees to the right, before snapping back during the dive back down to the ground. It's a great fun element, and definitely a highlight of the coaster. After the Stengel Dive, you've got a mix of high-speed helixes, twisted airtime hills, and the ride's finale, which consists of three back-to-back -back bunny hills that continue to give that characteristic Intamin ejector airtime. It's a fantastic ride. The setting and location of the coaster is another thing that really makes it stand out, travelling along the shore of a lake and even out over the water during one of the helixes. The coaster looks great in blue, although I personally preferred the original green and purple colouring, as it was a bit more distinctive. Overall, Goliath at Wallaby Holland is a great coaster, with a powerful first drop, strong airtime, and some unique twistiness that all adds up to one awesome ride. So there we have it, two Goliaths, but which one do you think is best? Let us know in the comments and keep an eye out for the next episode that we're working on, which should be on Austin's Amusement Insider channel in the near future. In that episode, two of the best B&M inverted coasters will face off, as Alton Towers' Nemesis takes on Busch Garden Tampa's Montu. I've been Rollercoaster David, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again in another video very soon.